One of those is transportable table spaces. So I'll give you the basics of transportable table spaces and then Daniel can get you into some of the nuts and bolts. The first of the basics is Endianness. We often talk about cross Endian migration or big Endian platforms, little Endian platforms. And really what we're talking about there is whether the high order byte in a representation of data is first or last when it's encountered by the operating system. Sort of like having some languages that read left to right and others that read right to left. The main point is in order to move from one to another, we're gonna to have to do some conversion. Now the Oracle Cloud is Linux x86-64. So it's not just Linux, but specifically a little Endian Linux platform. That means that if you're migrating from a big Endian platform, your database is going to have to be migrated using a technique that can modify the endianness of that database. So that means we can't use DataGuard in that case. We can't use just an RMAN backup and restore. We're going to use something like data pump, transportable table spaces, or full transportable export import. So when I say big Endian platforms, what I mean are things like the HP platforms, PA Risk or Itanium, the IBM platforms, Z series, or power based AIX or uh, Linux, or Spark Solaris. Linux x86 Solaris is a little Endian platform. If you're going to migrate a database from one of these big Endian platforms to Oracle Cloud, you bring the data files over and then we convert them once they're in the cloud to be little Endian. If you're not sure what your platform is in terms of Endianness, because you might even be on an older platform, one that's not in that list of supported ones, such as Apple Mac OS. Well, that was a big Endian format when we produced the server on Apple Mac OS, because that was back in the days of the PowerPC based Mac OS. Now, of course, we've got Intel Macs, but we don't have a server there. When we're moving things via transportable table spaces, we need to think about two very distinct sets of entities. Your metadata on the one hand, your users, grants, roles, constraints, triggers, all that kind of stuff. And then your data, the actual application data in your data files. So why do we have to think about these separately? Well, your metadata, when you create a user, what happens? We enter a entry in the user dollar table, there's a row added to OBJ dollar, all of that is happening in your system table space. So all of that metadata lives in the data dictionary in your system table space. Your data on the other hand, lives in your user and application table spaces, at least it should. It's a really bad idea to put user data in the system table space and you're about to find out one of the reasons why. See, when we have a system table space, that's, that system table space has to be exported with data pump. And that's because the system table space has a bunch of things in it that already exist in any new database. So it's got not just your metadata about the application objects, but it's got metadata about system objects that shouldn't move into a new database. Your data files, however, we can copy the entire data file as a unit. And if we're staying on the same endianness, we can just copy it from one system to another. If we're going cross endian, we can use RMAN convert, another great RMAN feature to convert the data files. So if we take this a step further and we look at the differences between metadata and data, your metadata is tied to a specific database version. After all, what's upgrade doing when we go to a new database version? It's modifying the data dictionary. And that can mean changing the representation of metadata for performance or functionality purposes. Your data, on the other hand, is independent of database version. So while your metadata will work only in a given database version, it has to essentially be recreated sometimes when we're moving it with data pump to a new version your data will work in the same or newer database version. You could actually have a table space data file that's been read only since 9208 and still read that data in a 19C database. So that upward compatibility is there for all your data. Your system table space metadata only works in the same database architecture. By that, I mean non-CDB versus PDB. If you think about how dictionaries are represented in a pluggable database, a lot of the things in that dictionary are now metadata pointers into a CDB root. That's what we learned all about in our previous webinar about migrating to multi-tenant. So 
that's going to be very different between a non-CDB and that same database as a PDB. There are going to be some things in a PDB that are metadata pointers, which won't be the case in a non-CDB. Whereas your data table space works the same on different database architectures. A data file on a PDB is the same as a data file on a non-CDB. So given these differences, that's why when we're moving the metadata, we use data pump because data pump does work across database versions and it does work across database architectures. It's your do it all tool. I know data that uh, Daniel referred to it as kind of your screwdriver. It's almost like a Swiss army knife that happens to have a screwdriver on it. It can really do it all. So with transportable table spaces, the combination of moving metadata with data pump and moving data files as files, that means we can move a database to the same or newer database version. We can go from non-CDB to PDB or vice versa. We can go from a PDB back into a non-CDB. 